What's up, YouTube? For today's video, we'll be full type changing Pokemon team. In the world of Pokemon people, you can change your type or you can change the opponent's type. That is what this team is based on. A uh, big shout out for Kotmeister. This team is for you. Thank you very much for all the Twitch support and I hope you guys enjoy this one. So the question of today is what is your favorite dual type? Leave it below in the comment section of the video. It can even be a type that doesn't exist yet. That'd be cool too. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You've liked the bell and selected all the notifications because if you missed the salt, it's not my fault. Now, in today's video, I'll be doing a doubles battle and a singles battle. You guys are really stressing me. You like the doubles battle. So I'm going to be including it in today's video. So if you like the doubles battle in all the videos, make sure you hit the like button because it's not going to like itself. Let's get into this one. So we got a Golduck and a Gorgas League, guys. We got a GG lead, if you know what I'm saying. And we got a Alakazam and Bishop lead. Let's go over what the Golduck set is. So we got a Soak. Synchronized Calm Mind Hidden Power Electric Set. Hear me out, people. This is hype. We got max special attack and max speed. We got the ability damp. Um, so if they go boom, it, it's, it's not going to happen in my room. And they got the item as life all for a little bit more damage output. Now, looking at the Gorgase, we got a Trick or Treat set. So what Trick or Treat does, it adds a ghost typing to the opponent. And we got Phantom Force. So you add like a ghost type and then you hit them with a ghost type move. We also got Phantom Force, Shadow Snake, and my favorite healing move. The ability is Frisk and the item as Power Hurt. Now, we're going to make the uh, Bishop a little bit wet there. You need to do that sometimes. And uh, it's going to be changing into the water type. Now, if Bishop up's gonna go for a sword dance. I'm thinking something like knock off, sucker punch, anything. It may be even like a Z move. And uh, now we got the Gorgase going for the trick or treat. Trick or treat looks really cool. Like it's a definite animation that I really like. So Mega Alakazam hit me with a shadow before. I've got to take it out with a shadow uh, sneak. And I'm gonna actually hit that for four times super effective. Because that was a psychic type to start off with, right? And adding a ghost type to it makes it four times uh, super effective. All right, so Alakazam I dropped its cutlery and it's out of the game. So the good thing about that was sucker punch was I was able to get another calm mind off so i've got my plus one in special attack and i've got my life life orb as well so i can go for the hidden power electric on the bishop for super effective damage all right so in comes the big alola executor it's gonna like a lot of pokemon in this battle had frisk it was quite funny feeling a little bit frisky at the moment people so goldux is gonna go for the uh, hidden power electric and it takes out bishop in one shot <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that Bishop's going to go, Bishop just can't believe what just happened there. And uh, Golduck's going to take a little bit of damage. So uh, Old Phantom is going to uh, disappear for a second. Now it has the power hurt right, so it's going to give uh, a low executor a little spank on the neck there. It does like a little bit, I'd say about 50, I'd say but maybe like leaves it about 52% health. And uh, I'm going to get hit by the Leaf Storm, and that's my Golduck down. But Golduck did a fine job there uh, taking out the Bishop. That crit totally mattered too. Like, a Lola Executor special attack is absolutely huge. It's a really cool Pokemon. So now it's got the White Herb there, uh, getting rid of those uh, drops, which is a really nice item to run on moves like that. And now we're going to swap in Trevenant. So Trevenant is a really cool Pokemon too, and it has a cool move called Forest Curse. So what Forest Curse does, it actually adds the Grass Typing to the uh, opponent, which is really cool. It's like... I can't trick or treat, but it's just grass, right? All right, so yeah, the Kangaskhan's going to come in there and it's going to take out my Gorgas with a scrappy normal gem fake out. So bye bye, Gorgas. And uh, now we're going to go for the Forest Curse there. Forest Curse looks really cool too. The animation, you can just see the trees grow in the background. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, so the uh, Long Executor is going to go for the Flamethrower. On my uh, Trevenant there, Trevenant's pretty bulky, so it actually tanks that one reasonably well considering I'm running more of a sweeping set. And uh, I've got the Citrus Berry as the item. So the moves I've got on this one are Forest Curse, Poison Jab, and X Scissor. So the idea of this set, right, is give them the Grass type, then hit them with a super effective Poison Jab or X Scissor. The other move I've got on this one is Pain Spit. The ability I've got is Frisk. And the item I've got on this one is Citrus Berry. Now, I did go between a different item in the singles battles, but you guys will be able to see that one a little bit later on. So go for the Poison Jab there on the Executor. Executor is going to go down, and it's Coconuts. Well, they're going to hit the floor, aren't they? Now we're going to go for the Kecklon Skill Swap. This Kecklon is a pretty cool set. So Kecklon has the ability color change. As you guys know, I've done a lot of videos with Kecklon in it, and I thought I had to include it in this one. So what the idea is, we're going to give the opponent color change right and uh, we got their moves thief drain punch and recover and we got the item as fire titium z so what we got to do right is we got to turn the opponent into a dark type first with thief or just hitting him with thief and then we're going to hit them with a z drain punch which is pretty cool anyway so the uh, electrode's going to hit me with a thunderbolt keklon just leaves that one and i'm going to hit the kangaskhan with a poison jab does a fair bit of damage there and it's going to change it into a poison i was kind of hoping it would actually take it out or i i, I kind of thought that my 
Yo, Trevin would actually go down this turn, but however, we got the Kecton going for the Z-move here. Now, if you guys did notice, Kangaskhan actually turned back into a Poison type, so like, oh no, this this better take out Kangaskhan, or it's not going to be really, really solid. So going for the all-out pummeling, now, I actually did uh, think about doing this with Focus Punch instead of Drain Punch. But then after I used my Z move, I'd have to like use Focus Punch without the Z Crystal. Well, that's not very viable. So I thought I'd go for the Drain Punch instead. So Kangaskhan is going to go down there, which is good. And uh, we got the Electrode left and we got the Reggie Steel. So Reggie Steel is quite a proper Pokemon. So things are going really good at this point in the game. Now we've got the Electro go for Protect there. And I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. Obviously, Reggie Steel is going to go for like some, maybe some sort of like a... Uh, you know, like a, a like a double hitting move or something like that, and it's going to go for earthquakes. So like, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, the earthquake's going to take out my Keklon, and it's going to take out my Trevenant at the same time. So even though I was, I was a fair bit in the lead there, it managed to take out two Pokemon at once. But don't worry, people. This is where the battle gets pretty interesting. So down goes my Trevenant, and down goes my Keklon. Now the two main players of this team are going to be coming into action now. So we got the Porygon, and we got the Gengar. Let me explain these really, really cool strategies. So we've got the Gengar with the air balloon, which is a nice little item on it. So we've got the Electro going for the Thunderbolt. Uh, and that's it, so Gengar, I guess reasonably hard. That's more, it seems to be more like a max health, max speed kind of electrode. All right, so firstly, we're going to go for the Reflect type, turning Gengar into an electric type. So with the air balloon, that actually makes it immune to everything. However, my, you know, my balloon actually did uh, pop, so I'm not immune to everything. I'm still immune to ground. But don't worry, people. I've thought of everything. So now we've got the uh, Regigas going for the uh, Curse, and we've got the uh, conversion on the Porygon. That's going to convert it into Electric type. My other move is a Charge Beam, which actually turns it into it. Now, my full set is as follows. So on the Gengar, we've got Telekinesis, Hypnosis, Dream Eater, and Reflect type. So now we're going to go for Telekinesis. Let me give you a rundown what Telekinesis... Actually, I'm just going to give it to you straight. Basically, if you use Telekinesis on Gengar, you basically go underneath its belly and you go... And then the ghost flies in the air. What you do a Porygon right, you run up 69 floors of stairs right, you chuck your computer out the window, and you got to make sure it's got helium balloons on it, and so then it can download. So that's a, you know, that, that's a pretty basic uh, explanation of Telekinesis. Now, Telekinesis runs actually for three turns, and you're immune to all ground types, which actually makes Porygon and Gengar you know, they're invincible. There's no super effective attacks that can hit them. There are abilities that probably could get through that, but initially they are, you know, not weak to anything, which is really, really cool. So that's the strategy I had with both of them. Now on the Porygon, I forgot to say what that set was. Let's go over that again. We got Magnet Rise. Um, we got Conversion, Recover, and... Sorry, we don't have Magnet Rise. We got... Um, not Acupressure. Why am I saying Acupressure? We got Telekinesis, and we've got Recover, Charge Beam, and Conversion. So that's what that set was. The other set I was running was the Magnet Rise one. I actually ran two different uh, Porygons. That's why I was getting mixed up there for. So the idea is basically with the Porygon and Gengar, when the Telekinesis run out, they basically just keep using on each other so they remain, like, not super effective to anything. So uh, we got this... Steel. This Riggy Steel is actually quite a big problem here. It's actually boosting its defense and its attack. However, it actually can't hit any of us with the Earthquake due to the Telekinesis. So now we're going to use the Telekinesis on each other again. Uh, the little uh, Porygon's going to fly. My computer's going to fly in the air again. And uh, Porygon's going to use it on Gengar, which is pretty cool. Now, it's sort of like uh, Magnet Rise, I guess you could say, but it's got a little bit of differences. Um, moves actually hit a lot easier. Sort of like Gravity, I guess you could say. Like Gravity uh, mixed with Magnet Rise, but it it runs not for five turns, it runs for three turns. There's also like a whole bunch of other things too. All right, so this Gengar's going to go for the Dream Eater on the Electro. It actually gets a nice little crit there. Now, as you can see, that critical hit, that is definitely a max health uh, Electro. I just noticed one really cool thing. Electro actually smiles in its sleep. So uh, the ability we got on the Porygon is the Analytic actually boosts it. Uh, so, you know, obviously, it makes it uh, a lot stronger when it moves second. And I've got the Charge Beam for Stab and to boost its special attack too. On the Porygon, I forgot to say, I've got Max Health and Max Special Defense Bold Nature. So it's a very bulky set. You could run this for Porygon too as well. Be like even more bulky and like more offensive. And the item, of course, is Everlight. So now Gengar's going to go for the Hypnosis on the Reggie Steel. However, the Reggie Steel, right, I was like, this is cool. They're both going to be asleep. I can finish this battle off. The Reggie Steel actually has a bearing to wake it up, which is a Chester Bear. I was like, oh, no. So now I'm going to go for another Charge Beam. I like how Porygon actually like swivels upside down too, and it's going to hit the Reggie Steel for reasonable damage. I'm guessing this Reggie Steel is most definitely like Max Health, Max Special Defense. It's already got like gigantic stats as well, like on the bulky side. So we got to get rid of this. Electro doesn't seem to be much of a problem at all. It's also asleep at the moment too. All right, so we got the Curse from the Reggie Steel there. 
And uh, get, we're both going to free ourselves from the telekinesis. The three turns is up. So, firstly, things uh, we got the electrode. It's going to go for explosion. Because if you remember now, Gengar is an electric type and Paragon is also an electric type too. So, explosion hits both of us. Um, it doesn't take the Gengar out, which is really good. However, electrode is going to go down. So I guess Electro is pretty much dead weight at this point, and they're really banking on this Reggie Steel to get them the W. All right, so now we're both going to go for the uh, Telekinesis again on each other. The good thing about this was I was able to outspeed the Reggie Steel with both, like definitely with Gengar and even Paragon, and Earthquake is going to miss. So this, this Reggie Steel could not touch either. So this was a really great example. Now, I wasn't sure if it had like any other moves apart from Earthquake. I was thinking, like, does it have like a Steel-type move, like Iron Head or something? Wasn't really sure at the moment. So we're going to go for a Charge Beam. They're going to boost by special attack again and now Reggie still goes for the Iron Head. Iron Head it actually actually resists against the electric type but uh, that is my Gengar down. Gengar is quite a frail Pokemon so I was like that's not too surprising. It set up quite a few curses too. Now I was actually pretty hopeful against this Reggie still right. Like the Iron Head has actually resisted a lot and the Earthquake well the only problem is right the Earthquake um, after Telekinesis wears off, you know, I'm going to get hit really hard. So he hits me the Iron Head. This is it, people. If I don't land the Charge Beam this time, the Telekinesis is gone. And the Charge Beam lands on the Reggie Steel, people. And that is game. And hits Reggie Steel right in the bread basket. Man, that was really close. Hope you guys enjoyed that first battle. Um, Man, double battles are really cool. You get to do, like, so many different strategies. All right, so the next battle is a singles battle. Now, I'm using the same tune, uh, but there's one Pokemon that's actually a little bit different. If you remember in the first battle, I mentioned that uh, I had another Porygon. This one's got Magnet Rise instead of Telekinesis. Because obviously Telekinesis, she, yeah, I was casting it on my like my, my ally, right? But Telekinesis, you really can't cast it on yourself. So you've got to go for Magnet Rise instead. All right, uh, so we got Illum Illuminati lead here. It's going to go for the Charge Beam. It's like, oh no, this is bad. And it's going to get a Charge Beam special attack boost. It's like... Okay, my Goldock's not going to be around for too much longer. I've got to do something. So I'm going to go for the Synchronoise on the Illuminati. And it does some pretty good damage there. It does like three quarters. And now the Illuminati is going to eat a berry. And it's going to heal itself over half. So I'm thinking, okay, I could go for the Hidden Power Electric here and take it out. But it's going to have Light Screen instead. I'm like, oh, come on. That was such a good... Like, out of all the moves it could have used, that was such a good counter. So I thought, okay, let's go for Calm Mind again. I should be able to live the next Charge Beam and then fire off a massive Hidden Power Electric to make maybe take it out with a crit or something like that. Okay, so you're going to get that plus one special attack and defense. And old uh, Illuminati is going to go for another charge beam again. Gold just hangs on there with 23 health. Now, the problem is I've got the life orb right, and I'm definitely going to go down after that to the charge beam. So now I'm going to go for the hidden power electric on the water type Illuminati now. And it oh, it just misses the KO. If that light screen wasn't there, it actually would um, you know, have actually uh, taken it out. So they were lucky. Oh, well, I was lucky. They missed the charge beam. And now I can go for a hidden power and take out the Illuminati people. That is uh, down, which is really good. The problem is, right, I'm going to take some damage from the Life Orb too, and my Golduck is going to go down. So it's a double KO to start the battle off, which is pretty interesting. By all means, that uh, Illuminati should have taken me out with the charge beam. So the next Pokemon we're going to bring is the Kecleop. You guys know what this Kekalon set is. And now we've got the Mighty Love Disc. Like, oh, what is this set going to be? Usually Love Disc runs like a more of a special set. So it's like, oh, I should be able to take this one pretty well. However, we've got to swap out and we've got Blossom. I like Blossom. It like, like, you know, just moves on the spot doing a little dance. Anyway, so we're going to go for Skill Swap there. We're going to get rid of its Chlorophyll. If it did have Scummy Day... Uh, you know, it's not going to use Scummy Day, right? Because it's going to boost the speed of my Kecleon. So the light screen's now gone, which is good. So I was thinking I might be able to implement my strategy here. So firstly, we can go for the Thief on the Blossom. Blossom's going to go for a facade there. It's boosted by the power of the Toxic Orb. And uh, now I'm going to go for the Thief and turn it into a Dark type. So here I was thinking, I've got two Ghost type Pokemon on my team here. They're going to really have to think and see about that. And I was thinking, should I go into them? I decided not to. And they went for a Sword Dance instead. So obviously, they'll probably predict me to go into one of my Ghost types. Like, I had Gorgeist and I had Gengar. So it was a pretty good, you know, it was a pretty good prediction to go for, right? Sorry, I had Trevenant too. That was three. So, you know, there's a really high chance I was going to swap out there. So I went for the Drain Punch there. I got the super effective damage. But unfortunately, it didn't do a lot of damage to Blossom. And uh, it's going to change it back into a Fighting type now. So Blossom... Is either going to go for a facade or a grass type move. I decided to go for a thief. I actually, you know, is actually a speed type there. Thief is not going to take it out, and uh, it's going to change it back into a dark type. I actually didn't think I'd outspeed, and uh, now the Blossom's going to go for a leap late and take out my Kekalon. But that's all good, people. It's going to actually go down to the toxic damage, and we got that's like the second turn we got like a double KO. So Blossom goes down to the poison damage, which is fun. So we got Love Disc, and we got three other unknown Pokemon. So I was thinking. 
Should I bring in Gorgase this time? We've got three Ghost Pokemon. We may as well bring them in. So the Gorgase strategy as follows. We've got the Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat is such a cool move. I really like it. So what we're going to be doing is making use of Phantom Force and the Power Herb. And then since Gorgase is such a slow Pokemon, you can generally get a really powerful... Um, uh, Phantom Force off, right? And then you can go for a Shadow Sink afterwards for some really good damage. Alright, so first thing we're going to go uh, put a little couple of Ghosts on the Fletching here. And we're going to turn it into a Ghost type. Well, sorry, add the Ghost type to the Fletching. So now Fletching's going to go for the Fire Blast. He's like, oh, this is going to do some solid damage to me. And guess what, guys? It takes Gorgase out of the crit. That was very, very important there. Um, to lose that Pokemon so early in the game. Like, I could have attacked afterwards, right? Um, I could have gone for my... I was actually going for my Phantom Force there, and then I could have gone for the Shadow Snake to take it out. But that's how it was. So now we're going to Fire Blast from the Fletching. They're doing some pretty solid damage to Gengar. It's a 2 hit KO. It's going to pop my little balloon there. And finally, the Hypnosis lands, which is good. I was like, if this misses, I'm in a very, very big trouble. So somehow, right, Fletching is flying in there, but it's asleep. How does a bird... Guys, tell me this. How does a bird fly in the air? Why it's asleep. I'm trying to fly in the air at the moment, but it's and I'm asleep, but it's not working. So I'm gonna go for the Dream Eater ride. It does some pretty good damage. It's a two hit KO. They could swap out, or they could stay in and risk it and go for like a risky fire blast and take me out. So the Tailwind's gonna peter out a little bit there, and I'm gonna go for the uh, Dream Eater and take out the Fletchinders, which is like a two hit KO, which is nice there. So I'm glad to get rid of that one. The prop, like, that would have been really bad for my Trevenant. Uh, speaking of which, Trevenant did have it pretty bad this battle, but you guys will see. So now we've got the Rotom coming in. Now, this was funny. I was like, let's go for Reflect-type, right? It may use something like Thunderbolt or Thunder Wave. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for Reflect-type. That's going to turn me into a Ledger type I'm also going to be a Ghost-type, too. They went for Thunder Wave, and it's not going to affect me. So that was, like, perfection there. Now, the only problem with me turning into Rotom, right, as you guys know, it's got the Ghost-typing, too. So I still retain that Ghost-type. So it's not the perfect... It's not the, like the perfection of like no super effective, but it's still pretty good. So now I've got the Reflect type up. I can go for the Hypnosis and the Dream Eater. I'm also confused too, which is kind of annoying, and I'm going to hit myself in confusion. So now Rotom's going to wake up and go for the Hex. It's still super effective, and Gengar just lived that one. I'm actually running a max health set and max speed on Gengar, so that's the only reason I live. All right, so I'm going to snap out. Hypnosis is going to land against the Rotom again, which is really good. I was getting pretty lucky with those Hypnosis like uh, landings in this battle. Some battles, though, I miss a lot. It's one of those moves you can either hit a lot of time or you just miss every single time and get sold about. Alright, so now we're going to go for a Dream Meter on the Rotom. Uh, that does some pretty solid damage. It's a solid 2 hit KO. They could still stay in, though, and take me out, or they could swap out, you know, into another Pokemon. Uh, there. So Rotom is actually going to stay in at this point, and it's going to get some uh, leftovers recovery, too. So it's it's very close whether the Dream Meter is actually going to take it out or not, um, depending on, like, the damage comes. So go for the Dream Meter on the Rotom, and it lives on one health, people. The merch is available. You'll find that link in the description. Speaking of merch, people, we are going to get a new merch in the future. It's going to be, if you know, it's going to be the Salt logo at the start. It's not my fault if you miss the Salt. Something like that. We're kind of working out as on. Anyway, so the Rotom's going to get Cursed Body, and down goes... Oh, my Gengar, that really sucked. Curse Body's a pretty handy one, too. So I think that may have been Rotom's only attacking move, the Hex, which was good for me. Obviously, I did know this at this point in the game. I just found it out after the battle, right? So now we're going to go into the Shreverant. We're going to frisk out the item we already know uh, that exists. Now I can either go for a Forest Curse or go for a Poison Jab and just finish off. And the Rotom, of course, is going to go for the Thunder Wave. So that's kind of annoying, and I'm going to get paralyzed. However, I went for the Z-Move this time, which is cool. So the cool thing about... Uh, this set is, I uh, didn't run this in the double battle, so it, instead of running the Fight EMZ on the Kecleon, I was running the Grass EMZ on the Trevenant, which, uh, you, you know, obviously used it on Forest Curse. So, if you go Grass EMZ, uh, Forest Curse, not only do you, uh, grow a couple of cool trees and add Grass Typing to the opponent, you actually get a plus one in all your stats. So, it's like getting an Ancient Power Boost. It's really cool. Um, only, obviously, only a limited amount of Pokemon to actually learn it. So, it's a really, really cool move, though. All right, so, uh, we're going to get Power Fusion by the Rotomi. So we're paralyzed and we're confused. So this was really annoying. I needed like one basic move to take this Pokemon out. So I hit myself a confusion like, okay, that's that's that, that's annoying, but I should be able to eventually get around this, right? It's got the grass typing on it too, so I should be going for like any move and take it out. However, we got the Krugerot coming in here. Now this is where things start to get pretty solid. So I hit myself a confusion. I actually have to speed the battle up at this point because it was such a long bit. 
So the Crookerook's going to come and use the Sand Tomb, right? And Sand Tomb is obviously traps me in there. I can't move, and it does residual damage every single time. Now, during the matchup with the Crookerook, right, I just couldn't attack her. Or like, I kept getting paralyzed. Like, I, I hit myself in confusion. Like, I literally didn't move for the entire thing. It was the biggest smoking pile of Trevenant you'd ever, ever see. Anyway, so that finished me off with the Disrespect Thunder Fang, which is very, very mean. And my last Pokemon, as you guys know, is the Porygon 2. But as you guys know, my set, right, I've only got Charge Beam. So I'm thinking, you know, what am I going to do? So on my Porygon, right, I've got Conversion. Now, Conversion actually has 48 PP at max. So I thought I might be able to stall out this Crook Rug. They also don't know that I've only got Charge Beam as my own move. So we're going to bury that Love Disc there, get a special attack boost. And I knew after them seeing the Charge Beam, they'd definitely bring the Crook Rug back in. So at this point in the game, we had the Crook Rook, which actually kept flinching me a couple of times. And I could actually get around it with the Recover and the Magnetize. It didn't have Earthquake either. It only had uh, Sand Tomb, which is uh, it's still a ground type move, but it wasn't as powerful. So now we get the Rotom coming in. They tried to confuse me with the Confused Ray. All I needed right was to land one Charge Beam against it, which I did, and Rotom was going to go down. So now the long bit started. We had the, like something else. And we had the Crook Rook, right, using Fire Fang, trying to burn me, to, trying to flinch me. Like, it, this went on for quite a while, and it's kind of why I had to speed this part up. So Magnet Rise allowed me to actually get around the ground type move, which is really cool. And I'd recover there. I almost died down to the crit. And uh, basically, this thing just couldn't do enough damage to actually take me out. So we were going for a few turns, sort of setting out, D do we want to continue doing this so we both struggle, or do we just want to you know, call it a draw or in both forfeit at the same time? In the end, we decided the best thing to do, it was a great battle, but we decided to both forfeit at the end because it was going to take a very long time to burn all of our PP up. And uh, that's pretty much it. A draw for the last battle. I hope you enjoyed both these. Hit that like button, people. It's not going to like itself. And enjoy the bloopers and bonus battle. Peace. Do do do